Hello everyone. I have wonderful news to share since the last video that I posted. It turns out that everything that I said in that video was completely correct. In the past few days, I have been living in exactly the way that I said that I was going to live in that video. If you didn't see my last video, by the way, it's not important. I'm just giving a bit of an update. It was true. Everything that I said was true. My intuition proved very, very good. However, I can't take all the credit for uh, this newfound happiness that I've found in my life. I can't share the full details of exactly what I've went through for multiple reasons, but mostly because we'd be here all day. I have a laundry list of things that have improved in my life since the last time that I saw you, just a few days ago. I wanted to make this video to talk about one thing in particular that I think has made the biggest difference in my happiness in the past four days, something that I've discovered that not only was I doing all of my life, but that I think that I think we're all doing this to some extent. And the reason that we're all suffering so much in our lives is because we're doing this one very, very stupid thing that we all need to stop doing. And that is using our intellect for everything. Now, we associate the intellect with intelligence. If you're an intellectual, that means you're an intelligent person. If you're an intelligent person, that means that you're an intellectual. But the thing about the intellect is that it's only one small part of a greater intelligence that you have within you. As a matter of fact, it's not even that much. Your intellect is probably a single digit, very, very low single digit percentage of your overall intelligence. You see, in our culture, it has become normal and almost customary to use the intellect to solve every single problem. Without getting too much into it, this just doesn't work because really it's only a survival tool. It's only a problem solving tool. But a lot of life is not problem solving. Let me put it this way. If you think that an intelligent person is only someone who is very strongly intellectual, think to yourself about all of the intellectual people throughout history and that you've personally known who have been some of the most miserable, depressed, tragic characters in all of history and all of life. And then think about the characters that you've seen in life that are particularly wise, who may not have a great deal of knowledge. They may not have an encyclopedic memory or they may not be trained or taught in anything, but throughout their entire life, they have been able to live in a way that is conducive to their joy and happiness and fulfillment in life without really having to be taught anything about themselves. Now, if you saw someone that had, in your estimation, zero intellectual capability, zero knowledge about anything, could barely even speak, could barely even write, could barely even form a thought. And yet, no matter what they did, they could do it in a happy, joyful, peaceful, fulfilling way. If you met someone like this, would you think that they were stupid? Would you think that they were an idiot? Would you think that they're not living their life correctly and someone needs to teach them the proper way to live? No, not at all. And yet, this is someone like I said, that has no intellectual capability. Yet, we see them, we don't think that they're stupid. This is the problem with your intellect. Your intellect is good for one thing and one thing only, survival. And it is capable of doing one thing and one thing only, recycling your old memories to help you survive better. Your intellect cannot create anything new. It can only take everything that you've experienced already and play around with it. So your ability to be spontaneous, your ability to be creative, your ability to experience novel things and be sensitive to everything, these are all parts of your total human intelligence because that is what intelligence is. An intelligent person is not someone who can only do one thing. If I was very, very good at scrubbing the floors, for example, if I could do it quickly and perfectly, but in everything else in my life, I was completely oblivious and incompetent. You would look at me and say, well, he might be very good at cleaning floors, but he's very stupid. 
This is what intelligence is. Intelligence is total intelligence. It's all intelligence. It's every single thing that makes you human working together in harmony, being strong and competent in all of the ways that you can live your life. That means also being emotionally sensitive. Someone who is emotionally sensitive without intellect is not very intelligent. Someone who is intellectually savvy without any emotional intelligence is not intelligent. Someone who can use all of their faculties to the greatest extent that they could ever possibly be used, regardless of what anyone's perception of what that is, that is an intelligent person. And what I have been experiencing in the past four days since my most recent video is the intelligence that I lost. By living my life intellectually, I was taking everything that I had ever experienced and just recycling it over and over and over in my mind, trying to figure out the entire world before I went out and experienced it. You will never, ever, ever be happy this way. And I know this now. Everything about my life has changed. Here, I want to show you something. So like I said, um, I can't give you all the details of everything that's changed because it's just a, too big of a list. But I wanted to show you this because when I was growing up, I was addicted to sweets. My parents always kept cereal and potato chips and snack cakes and ice cream and all kinds of treats throughout the house, but they never taught me to cook. It wasn't until very, very late in my life, probably in my 20s, when I met my now wife, that I started to learn how to cook just because she knew how to cook. But it's never been in my nature to cook. Even four days ago, I would not have been the kind of person to consistently cook myself my own meals. And I also would be the kind of person to go out to the store and buy a bunch of snacks and crap that is terrible for me. But today I went to the grocery store totally consciously, not out of compulsion, not because I was craving anything, because I wanted to make one good meal for myself. I didn't look up any guides. I didn't look up any recipes. I just used my intuition to think, what do I want to eat? What do I think would be really good for me? And this is what my intuition told me. I have broccoli here, Parmesan cheese and oyster sauce, which I'm going to use to fry the broccoli and turn it into a very delicious broccoli stir fry. And to go with that, I have mandarin oranges. And I figured I'd try out a couple of apples. One of them is Honeycrisp and one of them is Cosmic Crisp because I wanted to try what a Cosmic Crisp was and I wanted to compare it to Honeycrisp because Honeycrisp is my favorite apple right now. And alongside all of these groceries, I have some leftover lentil stew that I created because I've just been eating vegetarian lately. Now, why does any of this matter? Who cares that I bought a bunch of healthy groceries? Anybody can buy healthy groceries. This is what is important about this. I didn't look up a guide. For any of this. I didn't hear from some self-help video on the internet, this is what you should eat, this is what you should be doing, here's what you should cook, here's what you need to do. I wasn't listening to any authority figure outside of myself. I was listening to what was inside of myself. And my experience of what was inside of me forever has been, let's eat ice cream, let's eat chips, let's eat cereal, let's eat all of this crap that makes me feel terrible, and then let's sit around all day and just waste my life away. That was my internal experience of myself. That was what came out of me. I needed these self-help videos, these authority figures in my life to tell me how to live my own life because I was destroying myself. Because what came out of me was this desire to destroy myself. And now, all these things that used to be things that people had to tell me to do, that they had to tell me I should be doing with my life, it's not a should be doing anymore. It's I wake up in the morning and those are the kinds of groceries I want to buy for myself. I want to cook a meal for myself. I want to clean this house today. I want to do my yoga tonight. I want to eat outside. These are the things that are naturally coming out of me because I stopped trying to use my intellect to solve everything. Because by trying to use my intellect to solve everything, it was just recycling my experience of life over and over and over and over. And my experience of life was eating a bunch of crap all the time. It never occurred to me to eat anything healthy because I always was eating unhealthy things. I hate to judge my mom for anything. She did try to feed me healthy food, but well, a lot of the time she didn't really put a lot of seasoning in it. Uh, there was a lot of plain corn, plain mixed vegetables, uh, you know, pork chops with nothing on them. No disrespect to my mom, 
very grateful for her trying her hardest to feed me properly. But, well, when there's cereal and chips and ice cream and snack cakes in the house all day, and I'm not prevented from eating these things, I know what I'm going to eat, especially when I'm a kid. So that was my experience of life. And by trying to use my intellect to solve my life, it was just telling me over and over and over, well, this is what we know. This is what is comfortable. But in order to be receptive to any new way of living, this completely unimaginable grocery trip for me, even four days ago, the only way that it was possible was for me to let go of my intellectual, logical brain and open myself to all of my human intelligence. This is just one thing in a laundry list of 20 to 30 things that I've discovered about myself in the past four days that have completely changed just because of this very, very simple thing. I have let go of my mind. I am not trying to solve all of my problems with my intellect and my ego and my identity of everything. I know I probably haven't explained that very well. To be honest, I'm okay with that because the thing about explanations is if you're using your intellect to understand everything and you try to understand everything that I'm saying just with your intellect, then there's really no way that I can explain what I'm saying without it sort of being misunderstood. If you can come away from this video with anything, I want you to come away from this video with this. Your intellect is a wonderful thing. It keeps you alive. It keeps you comfortable. It keeps you safe. But alive, comfortable, and safe are not all of the things that you want in your life. You want happy. You want joyful. You want loving. You want alive. You want achievement. You want so many more things than just surviving and safe. And as long as you are using the intellect for all of these things, that is all you're ever going to get. You're just going to be alive, you're just going to be comfortable, and you're just going to be safe. But you will never be happy. You will be anxious, you will be sad, you will be depressed, you will become numb to your own emotions, you will become numb to the world around you, you will destroy your receptivity to everything that could possibly happen in your life. Your very, very brief existence on this planet, in this body, with this mind, it will just pass you by. So I urge you, because I was like you at one point. I watched so many self-help videos on YouTube. I was constantly listening to everybody else's ideas about how to live life. But as I was listening, I was only listening with my intellectual brain, taking their ideas in and then just recycling it around with my ego and playing little games with it, but never actually doing anything to change my life. Please understand, there's nothing wrong with your intellect. It's just that you're so much more than that. You need to be training more than just your mind all of the time. If you truly understand this, really understand what I'm saying, all I can tell you is just this. Four days ago, I was using my intellect for everything, and my life was a living hell. Mental illness had taken me completely. Addiction to all kinds of activities, not necessarily any substances, but all kinds of other things, had taken me. My life was enslaved to, to never-ending cycles of entanglement with dopaminergic activities, because that was all that I knew. But if you want to do what I did, if you want to abandon your life completely, because you're sick of it, you're sick of the way that you're living, and you want to live a new life, don't abandon the intelligence that you already have. Just start looking for a new one. After what I've learned, I know I cannot sit here and tell you how to live your life. Because even if I told you exactly what I knew would be good for you, it would be completely pointless. I would just be another authority figure in your life telling you how you should live instead of you understanding internally how you should live your life. I can't tell you how to live your life. All I can tell you is that you should be living your life. Not mine, not anybody else's, not your minds, not your bodies, your life, the life you would want to be living. And in order to live that life, you need to get all of your human intelligence working for you. Your intellect, your emotions, mind and body, everything should be with you in everything that you do. There is a method, there is a way, but I will teach you nothing. Because even if I explained everything that I'm talking about, 
it's pointless. How many videos have you watched like this? How many videos of someone telling you about their experience of life and then telling you how that you can get better and then things don't get better? How many times does it have to happen before you realize nothing is going to get better? Nothing. Not until you decide that you're going to make your life better. You're going to live by your rules. You're going to be responsible for everything that you possibly can. You are not going to be a slave of this mind and this body. You are going to create the world that you want to live in, in yourself, every single day. No matter what happens to you outside of you, it doesn't matter as long as in here, everything in here is peace and love and joy and happiness and bliss. What does it matter what happens outside of you? In your lifetime, the world, the entire world, may not know peace. But you can know peace in your life before it's over. I'm telling you, stop listening to all of this self-help nonsense. Stop listening to the endless stream of other people's ideas and start making your own. Start crafting your own life. Be a craftsman, not of any particular skill, but of this soul, this body, this mind. Be a craftsman. Be an artist. Design it the way that you want to. Engineer it the way that you want to. Because this is what I've done. And everything I never could have thought possible has all happened within the span of just a few days. It could happen to you too. But you have to be willing to abandon this way of life that you're living. If you do not, in this moment, decide that you are going to abandon this way of life, I promise you, you will keep listening to video after video after video of people telling you, you got to start living another way. You got to start living this way. You got to start living that way. And no matter what they say, it's falling on deaf ears. There is no moment other than this moment. You cannot decide to do better with your life in the future. You have to decide right now. Right now, you must decide. Right now, you must decide. Now. In this moment, decide. Right now, in this moment, you need to decide. Are you going to live a life that you want to live? Are you going to live in joy and happiness and peace? Are you going to make who you are everything that you would want to be? Or are you just going to keep imbibing, consuming information? If you want to live that way, there's nothing I can do for you. But if you want to live another way, there is another way. Be a craftsman. Be an engineer of nothing else other than this. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to make dinner. Have a wonderful life, everyone.